go local and go big, um, and how you can leverage some of the techniques, of course, in social and some in search and things like that, uh, and, and really uh, show that it doesn't take always money to do that. Money helps. We all know that, and that money helps. Um, but a lot of it is ingenuity, um, blood, sweat, and tears, rolling up your sleeves and being smart about it. And so we're going to hear from very, four very smart people about that. Um, so today we have um, Jacobson Salt. Have you all heard of Jacobson Salt? Um, they are a fabulous company. In fact, I just bought for my, uh, for Nana, my mother-in-law, um, meat heart salt. So they um, do local um, surveyed salt, and um, they have recently partnered with Be Local. Be Local. Um, Be Local is also a presenter here. Um, we have Damien Majesta, and so I'm sorry, Matthew Domingo from Jacobson Salt. Um, and then from Alma Chocolate, we have Hannah Sullivan. And then from Starvation Alley, sorry, that's an off bit. Um, we have Alana Hamburg. So we're very excited to have everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, a couple of notes about the DMS program and um, other fun and happening things at CEPI. Um, and for how many of you are new to CEPI? No, I'm you good, good. How many of you have been uh, in a CEPI course? Can you raise your hand? Excellent, okay. Um, we have lots of great graduates. Hi, everybody. Um, so CEPI is the Center for Executive and, and Professional <coughs> Education. And really, we specialize in helping close that gap between what you might have learned in your BA or your AA and what's happening today in the modern world. And so I teach the social media portion. We have a content portion. We have analytics search engine optimization, uh, digital marketing strategy. So um, it's just an example. We have HR, we have Lean Six Sigma. Uh, we really run the gamut of professional courses that really help you bridge some of those gaps that you might have, you know, you went into the workforce or you're thinking about changing jobs and you really want to up your game and you really want to get more expert in what's happening right now. So all the instructors are in business and they um, donate their time. Uh, and, and come in here and try to teach what's going on. I, I get paid full disclosure. I'm just um, and so they come in and, and teach what, what they're doing in the real world and practical applications. Um, so it's, it's a very, uh, I would say, applied science. Um, and so you're not going to get as much theory. Uh, you're going to get some strategy and then really case studies and applied science that's really informative. Um, if you have any questions, I will be here after to answer your questions. I have also have Melissa over in the corner, um, who is the DMS uh, program manager. And then students, raise your hand one more time on the DMS certificate. Um, so these are all graduates of the DMS certificate. So if anybody's really interested and in, in thinking about joining, feel free. Can I volunteer you guys to answer some questions after class? Okay, great. Excellent. Okay, so um, we are going to start off with, I think we said Matthew. Was that right? Okay, great. So I'm trying to toggle over to Jacobson. And Matthew, why don't you come on up just so that it's uh, so sure. that they can see it better. Hi, everybody. Okay. Yeah, All right, so I think there's just a, a bunch of visuals yeah. going. I'm just going to talk. Um, so a little bit about myself really quick. Um, I've worked in a lot of different industries here in Oregon. I've been here since 98. I went to school at the University of Portland. Uh, at one point, I was a chef and event director here in town. I uh, worked in the food manufacturing industry. I used to be a sensory manager at Amy's Kitchen down in Medford. Uh, and then moved back, back to the dark side uh, in PR and marketing and worked <laughs> for uh, Maxwell PR for Travel Oregon. And then before I came to work with Ben Jacobson, and Damien over here uh, was uh, communications and PR manager at Travel Portland. Uh, so I came on uh, to Jacobson Salt Company in December. And uh, as far as Jacobson, so how many people have actually raised your hand if you've heard of Jacobson Salt Company? Okay, so I'll do the quick watch deal. Uh, so it all actually started with Ben Jacobson. So one, one person started the company uh, about, actually many, many moons ago. We started four years ago. It was actually our fourth anniversary, August 11th. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, but, but prior to that, Ben was living and going to business school in Scandinavia. And he was living and working there, and he actually, that's where he first discovered uh, good, like, flake finishing salt. 
And so he and his girlfriend uh, were in their apartment and she had purchased this $10 bag of salt, tiny little bag of salt. And he's like, what are you doing buying? This is expensive. Why are you can't afford this? What are you buying this for? And he tasted it and it, he had never tasted anything like that before. You know, he's used to, you know, just Morton's iodized salt. And so he kind of had this fascination for it. And when he came back uh, to the Pacific Northwest in the early 2000s, he was, he was sort of fascinated by this, um, this attention in, in, uh, to produce and locally grown meats and wine and fruits and all that, but nobody was actually making salt in the United States uh, the way that we used to, the way that, the way that Louis, Louis and Clark used to. So he actually started dabbling and uh, it took him about three or so years to figure out actually how to make good salt. So he used to go out to, to the coast and, and uh, actually just bring in buckets of water and bring it back to his kitchen and start to fool around with it. And he learned that it's much more than just boiling water. You can make really bad salt. Yeah. <laughs> so it took him about three years to figure out how to do it. It was a very specific process, these specific windows of salinity and heat and time and so on and so forth. Uh, and, and the cool story, I actually learned the story a couple of days ago. We were doing a, a, uh, an interview with New Seasons. And so what actually happened was uh, there was a little maker's market that New Seasons was coordinating for new vendors. And one of his friends said to Ben, you should go to this. You know, go have a table, you know, show your salt, let the buyers taste that sort of thing. And it was happening in three days. And so he said, okay, sure. So he got one of his friends who's in the design community here to mock up a brand, which is our brand today. Literally in 24 hours, they like did the branding, made one little label, <laughs> stopped in a plastic package, put a salt inside, and, uh, and then they did the market. The two main buyers at the time for, for New Seasons were like, this is amazing. I want a case for each store. How soon can we get it? And, Ben's, and then Ben's quote, his famous quote is, uh, as soon as I start a business. <laughs> so 11 days later, uh, he got the permits from the Oregon Department of Agriculture uh, and the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife to harvest water from New Tarts Bay, uh, and so on and so forth. And then, and then uh, another just kind of a good number, a good little uh, group of numbers to kind of show you how much we've grown is at that, that very beginning, like, he was actually making around 30 pounds of salt per month. And now we make 12,000 pounds of salt. Wow. And so all of our, our product line, we actually have around, um, uh, for lack of a better term, an asinine number of SKUs right now. <laughs> and we're trying to actually tone that down. But all those those SKUs, those products, are available at every single Williams Sonoma store in the country. It's over 250 stores. Uh, that's our lar currently our largest customer. But we sell to over 1,100 accounts all throughout the country and throughout, throughout the world now. We're distributing to. Um, to Japan, uh, to Australia, and then actually we just started distributing to uh, Kuwait and that stuff. So. Anyhow, uh, cool. yeah, salt to Kuwait <laughs> and candy, salt and candy. So we have a line of, of salts, infused flavored salts. We added our salt to a line of confections, so we have that as well. And we have a line of, it's almost like, we think of it as like the, uh, it sounds silly because it's salt, but the Intel inside model. So. <laughs> We put our salt in a number of pantry staple items from other brands that we trust around town, around the country, and then they, they co-brand that with us. So, so that white label, what's that? Is it a true white label? I'm sorry? Is it a true white label? Or is it Do you promote your oh. brand with it? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. And so then we, we sell that, and then, yeah, we, you'll see, um, we, should, we had some of those pictures in there. Uh, so we have a, uh, Line of hook and line caught albacore tuna that we work with a fishery out on the coast, and that's heavily branded with our with our brand on there. Oh, your brand isn't there. Okay. Yeah, the brand is it's, it's co-branded. Yeah, so I can show you. I can send you a little little deck. So we also work with Spielman Bagels, Mustard and Co. up in Washington. Uh, we've worked with Hannah and all the chocolate before. Um, yeah, chocolate companies uh, that kind of stuff. So um, anyhow, that actually leads into this conversation. Um, because we've grown so fast, we've grown over 300% a year for the last four years, and the, we're going to continue to see that, at least for the next three, that's, that's what's projected anyway, um, which is 
horrible <laughs> for me. So I have two jobs. I have, actually have four jobs now. Because we've we've actually joined forces with the local as a local hunting company, um, and so I'm the director of sales and marketing. So I, I'm doing both things. Um, so we've we've always kind of had this marketing, the kind of a guerrilla marketing strategy, really. Um, we haven't really had a budget to, to speak of, but now we're, you know, we're selling um, nationally and and we're one of the largest you know, artisan producers, craft producers here in Portland, having that great guerrilla marketing strategy. And what we've really relied on, and what I continue to rely on since I've been here, is strategic partnerships, uh, it's building actually a community and the influencer program that we have, uh, and and then trying to have like a few set like uh, digital pillars that we can call back to, where we do spend a little bit of money, like websites and uh, and photo and visual content and those sorts of things. But we're a little bit different, I think, than other than other companies. Like the, the, our influencer program is huge. That's how we really started. So we started selling salt to celebrity, you know, Portland celebrity chefs out of the back of. Ben Subaru in the kitchen group parking lot over here. So that's how we started. And then they became these natural advocates for our brand, for our products. And so through that, through that sort of uh, unofficial influencer program, that's how we grew. So they started doing, you know, doing a, you know, word of mouth marketing for us. And so then before we knew it, Thomas Keller in California at the French Laundry, April Bloomfield in New York, uh, even John George, uh, which is a very famous restaurant in New York. They heard about us and are asking for our salt. Um, so uh, that that's a, something that's automatically built into us because we we sell like we actually do business with these these people that have their own huge um, huge followings of, of folks and they have their own you know, little spheres of influence. So that has actually that's been a huge thing for us. And so what we started to do which we haven't done up until the point that I've come is, is actually trying to capture a lot of that content. Uh, whether it's through other folks, you know, other chefs and other <coughs> artisans in, you know, Instagram feeds or Facebook posts and that sort of thing. Um, but basically we're trying to build, through not spending very much money at all, build this web and have that web continue to you know, grow. And that way we, we're, and we end up not spending that, not very much money at all. but our our actual reach is just exponential. So um, another example of that, we've we have started um, an actual set program where we once a month bring one of those customers, one of those influencers out to have a brand immersion, is what I call it. So we'll go out to the coast and we'll do a tour of the salt works. Uh, so, so for instance, a very specific example, uh, has anyone heard of uh, Lake of John restaurant here in Portland? He's a chef, Cape Rucker. He's a he's nationally a, a renowned. He's a award winner. It's a James Beard Award winner, which is one of the it's like the I don't know the Grammys or the Oscars of food. So anyhow, he is a, he's an award winner of that. So he is one of our best customers. So we brought him out to the Saltworks. We do a tour, and then we actually cook a, a meal for ourselves, just a small group of people, and we invite their families out, and we we cook a meal and then have a little bonfire, they spend the night, there's a house in the salt works, and so they get to take advantage of that. And the entire time our photographer is just sort of taking candid pictures of folks. And so then that lives on all of our social media platforms, that will live on this brand new website that we just launched last week, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So it's actually, it's a, it's a way to have fun and, and de-stress from our very, uh, very busy schedule, but it's also a way to, to to capture that content and multiply it, multiply it in the digital space. So, um, and another, and the, the key like pillars that we that we've worked with in the past. We I don't know if anyone's ever seen our old website. It was terrible. Um, it was really bad. We we hated it for a long time, but we just couldn't afford to to upgrade it. But we just we spent a decent amount of money. We switched platforms over, so we have a brand new website. We actually do a lot of business through that. Um, we, ha we, even though we're close to being a um, close to being a four or five million dollar company this year, we 
we, uh, we don't do any print advertising. We don't do any online advertising. We don't spend any money on that right now. I, I envision us doing so in the future to drive more traffic. But right now, we have our website. We have an Instagram feed that has, uh, we now have 12,000 followers on it. And actually a lot of engagement through that. Uh, and then we are starting a program uh, on our social media platforms where, where we'll actually start to um, to repost other, other folks' content and encourage more engagement through that. So we're hoping to, the, the goal is to actually grow our, our uh, social media following in half in the next three months through through some of those programs. Uh, let's see what else. I know we're gonna have questions at the yeah. end, right? Yeah. Um, I think I think maybe kind of to sum it up, really, it it's been crazy four years. Um, we are we're about to uh, by the end well by the end of the first quarter of next year we should be available at all Whole Foods nationally. Um, which is really cool. So we're about to go in right now. We're in the Pacific Northwest region. The way Whole Foods, uh, as a business works, when they're bringing in new vendors, uh, you have to go region by region. Uh, you have to kind of win your region first. So before we can go to any other regions in the United States, we have to uh, work with all the buyers for individual stores in Oregon, in Washington, uh, and then and now we're actually uh, going to go into the uh, Rocky Mountain region, which is. Which is actually a huge region, and then from there we will get a, we'll get a meeting with uh, the folks in Austin, and then a rollout uh, to every region in the country from there, uh, which is kind of neat. Um, but yeah, I was going to say just to sort of sum it up, like we have because we've grown so fast and we haven't had a lot of access to capital, we've had to employ employ this sort of guerrilla guerrilla marketing strategy, and and luckily our our story has been unique enough. We're the first company to harvest salt in the Pacific Northwest since Lewis and Clark. That's the, the sentence. And that sentence was picked up by New York Times and Smithsonian and so on and so forth. Um, we, we, we leverage the story and then we leverage the power of sort of real marketing and the power of community, really. And that's, that's really led to a lot of our success. Um, we've definitely messed up and not taken advantage of a lot of things. Um, but I think for what we've had, I think we're doing okay. Um, but we can always do better. Yeah, that's it. That's right.